morning, Lionhearts. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. I had an idea for a vlog today. Any ideas what it might be? That's right. Hope you're all doing well. We're going to the Musical Instrument Museum today in Phoenix. Days with Jordan the Lion, it begins now. Looks to me like we have arrived. All right, my friends, I am super excited to see this because the last few times I've come to the Phoenix area and wanted to vlog this, couldn't. They didn't, weren't allowed to have any of the museums open, so now it's open, and I know they have some really interesting and famous musical instruments inside, so I wanna go in and see them, and I'm gonna take you with me, so let's go. Before we even get inside, take a look at these. I wonder if those are instruments. My guess is yes. I absolutely would agree with that. Music is the language of the soul. All right, we're gonna start with a special exhibit. The special exhibit is the Congo masks. I had to check that out. I'm trying not to talk too much because it's a museum and it's pretty quiet in here. The thumb piano. And this one even has a power wand. Look at that, that's a drum. says that they made these masks for many purposes to frighten, protect, appease, bless, purify, honor, heal. It's almost like a Friday the 13th Jason mask. <laughs> Truly four eyes. And that is a drum. Oh wow, take a look at these. Makenga mask. like a bird on top of it. Now let's go see the general admission section of the museum. That was a pretty good exhibit. Oh, this is cool. Let's check this out. The John and Joan Diodario Orientation Gallery. Saying the guitars come in many shapes and forms. So we'll show you some of them. 
look at some of the amazing um, fretboards and everything like this one the puppeteer look at what they did to the whole neck This is called the Voodoo Guitar. Take a look at these. This is called the Black Sun. Never seen that one before. It's kind of like, it's got metal pieces in there. And it's hollowed out. And this is the Haman. And the Formanta. And then this one's called the Gitler. Let's hold on, hold on. Whoa. And here we have a liar. French liar. The harp. Guitar. Of course. You can guess why that is. And the smooth talker. Take a look at this guy. Wow. Pretty elaborate. I'd hate to be the one to have to tune that thing. And then that is a Glenwood. Glenwood 95. And a silent guitar that almost has no guitar to it. <laughs> see? You can see her walking right through it. Look at the didgeridoos hanging up here. That's what those are. Of course we have a gigantic pipe organ. Now this, this is one of the most unique and most popular guitars that you can get. This is called an air guitar. <laughs> Wild stallions. The air guitars played around the globe. World championships are held annually. <laughs> All right, let's wander into here. Now look at that thing that looks like a big golf club. That thing's huge. It's gotta be 20 feet tall. It's an Alphorn. That is called a Kong Mon from Thailand. Looks like little steel type drums inside there. Glass trumpet. And that horn. And then they would scrape the teeth on this, on this jawbone. Oh, I love this. I'm a fan of the accordion, the piano accordion. <laughs> and then I've never seen this before. Whoa! What the heck? And then what's up with this? That's like part of a guy's body. And then there's strings going from his head down through his neck. And take a look at this. Isn't that interesting? Bassoon. That is a concert zither. Which is very interesting, and then look at that. The Mark VI tenor sax. It's like magenta. Now it looks like we're going upstairs. Look at all the stuff they have hanging. That is one giant guitar. Look at that gong, isn't that cool? I'm not gonna show you the whole place because I want you to come visit for yourself, but I'll show you a little bit in every room of things that I like about it. So I'm gonna start at the far end at the United States. Wait, is that Bob Ulrich as in Robert Ulrich? As soon as we come in, take a look at that. 
the Northwest. Lots of drums because of the Native American influence, you can see. A whole lot of drums and big ones. This section is dedicated to Steinway, Steinway pianos, and how they construct and build them. Isn't that incredible? I love that. The pieces that go into making it, so the people like Liberace and Jerry Lee Lewis could play it, John Lennon. Speaking of John Lennon, they used to have the Imagine piano here, but it's not here anymore, unfortunately. A little kitchen piano. This is kind of cool because it's all marching band stuff, but they even included like the old pump organ, the one-man band organs. And they have a section for mail order instruments. Isn't that something? And this section is for John Philip Sousa's band, the concert band. Look at how ornate that is. Look at all the engraving and everything all over it. And here what they're showing the stick guitar, people playing the stick. I was never really into that. No offense if you play it, but I always thought it took a special kind of person to be able to pull off that look. He's doing it, but not I. And then we have a little Martin Guitar Factory in here, how they make some of the most amazing acoustic instruments in the world. People that have played them. Of course, Elvis up there on the wall. Sorry, like I said, I just I'm not gonna be able to show you everything. This place is way too big. Plus, I think it'd be a little boring if I went instrument by instrument. I just want to give you a feel for how cool this place is. Latin jazz. And then down here is the early jazz section. They even have it separated by, you can see the early jazz, by women in jazz, right over there. And if you're talking jazz, you gotta talk First Lady of Song, Ella Fitzgerald, that was her gown. And this section's for the blues. You can see the jug and homemade cigar box guitar. But what's cool is they have a whole collection here of harmonicas and they're all signed by famous blues players. And if you look right there in the dead center, there's a name we should all know. B.B. King. Holy cow, that is Howlin' Wolf's Fender. Isn't that something? Wow, 1963 Fender owned by Howlin' Wolf. That is so cool to see. Man, talk about legend. And the name's even worn off the headstock. They even have a section for polka. Oh, that's cool. The Peacock Pearl Ludwig. Then check out this section on Cajun Zydeco music. That's like a vest, a washboard vest that you could play. Rub boards. And this is all for Appalachian music. And this was Kilby Snows and it says that uh, the only existing auto harp played by Kilby Snow of Grayson County, Virginia. Snow altered chord bars, added strings, and made his own picks to suit his innovative left-hand technique. Oh man, now we're going back to high school, 
or junior high even, the handbells. Remember that? Anybody remember that? Here's a cheese box banjo. That's interesting. Never seen one of those before. Then here's a country section. So look at that. Hank Thompson's nudie suit. Wow. Holy smoke, look at that thing. An arch top guitar. That thing's nothing to scoff at either. That quad string master steel guitar belonged to Noel Boggs, who played in the bands of Hank Penny, Bob Wills, and Spade Cooley. And this little ukulele was owned and played by country music superstar Roy Acuff. Shallow impressions remain after the artist signed countless autographs against its back. That's cool. Can't see the back though. And that's a ukulele that's inspired by Charles Lindbergh's airplane, The Spirit of St. Louis. <laughs> so let's go over here and check out the rock and roll section. See if we find any famous guitars or instruments. This was not Chuck Berry's guitar, but they're showing that this was one that he made famous. A similar guitar. I thought I recognized that guitar, that with that five on it. I was like, why do I know that guitar? Didn't Pete Townsend have that? And then sure enough, yeah, this was uh, Les Paul Deluxe that Pete Townsend of The Who used. He modified the Gibson Les Paul Deluxe for much of his shows in the 1970s. And that is Joey Kramer of Aerosmith's Clear Drum Set. Used it from 73 to 75. Oh, and then this blue guitar was played by Johnny Ramone and Ed Stasium on Ramone's recording with custom seafoam green finish. Look at that. My friend Stefan's friends with Ed Stasium. He's the producer for a lot of great records. Now that guitar was played by Ken Hensley from Uriah Heep. Take a look at all the synths. Man, tons and tons of them. And then this guitar, this Firebird, Firebird 7, that was uh, played by Thurston Moore from Sonic Youth. And Jim O'Rourke from 1990 to 2003. What a great band. Teenage Riot, it's a great song too. Oh, this is Kick Brooks' outfit from Brooks and Dunn. And over here we have some pretty cool stuff. This guitar was the guitar of uh, Leon Rhodes who played for Ernest Tubbs and the Texas Troubadours, and he was also on Hee Haw. And then this was Webb Pierce's guitar and costume, his nudie suit. Pretty neat. Wow, talk about interesting instruments. Look at that, that Beatles guitar. There's so much to see. I haven't even made it out of the United States and Canada section yet. <laughs> Check this out, the Alice Cooper section. <sighs> Look at that. I just did a vlog on the band Sparkle Horse and he was obsessed with Alice Cooper when he was younger. There's the, it's the mirror suit, it's what it's called, with Alice's head. <laughs> Signed cane, you can see Alice's signature down there. Top of the cane. Even the uh, shirt is signed. My friend Eric was the drummer of Alice Cooper and he was telling me, he said, Alice is one of those people he loves his fans and he loves being famous. So, you ever see Alice Cooper, don't be afraid to say hi. Wow. Cool stuff. Oh, nice. Look at this. School's out. Then some early photos of the band. And there's their yearbook. He had a band, they had a band called the Earwigs. So it's Cortez High School. Right here, because Alice was from out here. Formed a parody 
to the Beatles. The Earwigs debuted their 1964 high school talent show. In 1965, they became the Spiders, then the Naz, and finally Alice Cooper in 1968. So that's what this spaced out crazy base is. Look at it as you, you can see everything swirling and stuff. Whoa, that was one of the Earwigs and Spiders bases before they were Alice Cooper. And it says that hat was made by Alice's mother. <laughs> and check out that stage jacket of Alice's. Now there you see Les Paul and Mary Ford and they have one of the original gold tops. The one of the first 50 ever made. And then this little silver guitar right here, that's a uh, Rickenbacker by Brola, and it says it's one of the very first guitars to feature a whammy bar. Every time I hear the word whammy bar, I always think of Frank Zappa. Here's one of the old classic silver tones, where the uh, amplifier was built right directly into the case, you can see right there. And of course, this three neck guitar that is a Steve Vai guitar. I'd know the look of that guitar anywhere, especially with the pyramid eye. They sell two-day passes to this museum, and I totally now understand why. We haven't even made it through one country yet, and I'm not sure we will. There's too much to see. It's an extremely rare example, owned and played by jazz musician Clyde McCoy, whose family was part well, of the historic Hatfield-McCoy feud along with I'm the Kentucky-West Virginia border. Oh, it's and I love bagpipes. Love the sound of the bagpipes. Here's a player piano. Those became very popular at one point in the early 1900s. And take a look at this. This fiddle, in this case, it says this belonged to Don Messer of the Canadian television show Don Messer's Jubilee. That's really interesting. This is called a homemade ugly stick. And it's a musical instrument. They said it used to be used with a fiddle. And look how they used beer bottle caps stacked together and soup cans and different things in different positions to get different sounds out of it. Interesting. The ugly stick. So I made my way into the European room and this is a French piano. Very, very nicely done. And this is the England section. Of course, they're showing the bass made popular by Paul McCartney. Call it the Beetle Base. You see the quarrymen. That is a uh, tea chest base, is what that was called. That wasn't the one from his band, but they said that they played one exactly like that. Then this is heard on the hits by Moody Blues, David Bowie, Genesis, yes, the Mellotron. And here we have a Jeff Beck Stratocaster, signed by Jeff Beck. Look at that, that is a serpent horn. Military serpent horn. Here are some of the instruments of Spain. You really, you really just have to come to this place and see it for yourself. I mean, there is so much here. I mean, look at this. For every every single continent there is a gigantic room like this here we're in the section dedicated to Ireland and they have a drum signed by the chieftains and the Netherlands look at that even a section dedicated to the bells cathedral music. 
ballet and the opera. One of the costumes. Little, like a puppet box. Now that is a pretty intense accordion and bagpipe section. Now that's one of the more crazier accordions I've ever seen in my life. Wow. So here's the Germany section. Here they're showing a violin maker's workshop. The process of creating a violin. Here we have the harmonica section, but take a look at this. Look how big some of these are. They even have a little sales rack here. Well, a big sales rack, and you can see how size difference in some of those. This is the section for the Ukraine. They have some pretty interesting decorations on their instruments here. Look at that. Here we are, showing the theater instruments and costumes of Japan. Here's Singapore. The big parades. And look at all the Indonesian instruments. Aren't those beautiful? Even just to look at, they're incredible to look at. You don't even need to hear them. <laughs> or I don't. But I bet I'd love it. And this is the gong section. They must be showing how they make the gongs here. Oh wow, this is Burma. Stringed instrument created like an alligator or crocodile, sorry. Never seen that before. Circle drums. And here's Cambodia. Another circle drum. Look at that. Those are great. This is Mongolia. I love all the use of color on the instruments. Look at that. I'm not sure what you would call that. I don't know if that's... See, it's called a Shava. It's a ritual dance costume. Oh, wow. South Korea. Those are like bells. A scraping tiger. So that's what you use the ridges on the back.
Wow, I think we might be wrapping it up for the day. There's just so much to see. Too much to see, in fact. Holy cow, what an amazing experience this was. You really do, I'm not kidding, you really do need to spend the whole day here. But I think you guys got a taste of how amazing this place really is. All right, my friends, we are gonna call it a day. Thank you all for watching. I hope if you are in the area, you will stop out here and take a look. This is a lot of fun. You can learn a lot, you can hear a lot, and just kind of cool to see how artistic some of the musical instruments really look and I'm sure sound. So have a great night. We'll see you all next time. Goodbye.